part we bought some extra materials to make a stable platform to build on. So here for instance we have a nice aluminium shape that is really robust, doesn't bend. So we can use this as a basis to build everything on top of that. So that's good. And also, but I I was looking for power supply because I need a lot of amps, low voltage, but a lot of amps. So I was checking out uh, uh, all the websites for uh, a power supply, but then I thought, hey, I have old computer power supplies, maybe they can work. So I searched, and this is actually the power supply that I uh, got from uh, Ron Hofman, because uh, this is uh, from his old PC. He said, Here, here's my computer, maybe you can use some parts from it. And well, I took it apart and uh, scavenged uh, some parts. And as a matter of fact, this is the perfect unit that I need for this laser cutter. So, we did all the drilling, and this is the damage. Oh boy, I have to clean it up. So, but what are you doing? Maybe you can tell. I'm just uh, securing all the bolts and nuts that I put in uh, earlier. But what are you mounting? I'm mounting the guide rail for the x-axis onto uh, a square piece of tubing, aluminium tubing, one and a half millimeters thick. Nice. That should make it extra stiff along the length. Nice. So it won't sag in the middle. Brilliant. So this is what's inside the motors that I um, that I ordered, at least that's what I thought. Uh, I thought I ordered uh, unipolar stepper motors, which works like this. You have a five volts in the center, which is the, the, the common uh, the unipolar uh, basically. Then you have an A and a B lead. So if you ground this one, uh, the current goes that way. And if you ground this one, the current goes this way, and the same for the other side. So then the, the magnetic field change and you can rotate the thing. So that would result in a very simple uh, electronic circuit, which uh, looks like this. You have A, B, C, D for all those leads. The 5 volt is permanently on there. And basically what you do with a small pulse from the microprocessor on a simple uh, transistor, you can short this to ground. Uh, one of those leads and the current flows and by controlling this with a microprocessor you can control the motor very simple but I made a mistake I ordered the wrong motors or I got different motors what I actually received uh, are motors without this so um, <laughs> this with this uh, circuit inside the motor, this uh, schematic here doesn't work anymore because I can ground this or ground that, but there's no voltage from the other side, so um, I need a different uh, schematic. Um, I thought maybe sending the motors back and get other ones. This is called, um, not unipolar, but these motors are called bipolar because they have two poles for each one. Um, but there is an advantage to these motors as well because if you have a, if you have a lead here and uh, you are only using this part of the magnetic field um, so that gives you half the power so if you leave this away and you con control the flow completely here um, you have double the amount of power so that's not bad uh, it's just that the electronic circuit that comes with it but that, you that you need is uh, a little bit more expensive so we can forget about this this doesn't work we need something else we need basically to turn around the voltage every time to drive this little motor uh, I need a H bridge the electronics for the driver um, so I was designing a little H bridge that could do it uh, the resistors there on the top uh, probably will do this in another way uh, and then of course this 
the whole H bridge should be connected to a microcontroller. So I have here the microcontroller, and uh, so and the idea is that the current can go from here then to here and here, and the other way around from here to here and then to here. So uh, I decided to turn on the upper ones, like turn this one on and then PWM this one with numbers I get from a sine wave uh, lookup table and the other way around I turn this one on and then I PWM this uh, with the values from the same array. So I had to do a lot of programming, well actually it was not a lot, it was quite easy, I had some little bugs in there but finally I could get it. So this whole micro stepping in a microcontroller, that's not a big deal at all, that was easy. The hardest part was actually here, uh, here you can see the LEDs uh, telling me which uh, uh, FETs and transistors are uh, activated and which not. And, uh, but the hardest part was here actually to find uh, a good balance between um, the voltages and uh, the, the, the gate and the base voltages and uh, these kind of things. So uh, as you can see here I have, uh, this is uh, measured in series with the motor, it's amps and as you can see I can pretty much control the amount of current going through the motor. This is a 2 amp motor but I'm not willing to go that far yet. Um, but this is a pretty good indication, 1.3 maximum, something like that. And so let's see what it does on the other side. Um, there we go. So it's climbing there. Yeah, about the same. A little bit of a yeah error there, but not too much. Workable. And here you can see the signals um, that I'm putting into the fats. Oh, now the other fats are going. So. The, the other two are going now, so uh, we have to wait until this drops. So this drops, and then you can see here the LED dimming, Up, and then the other ones go, and then you can see here that the PWM is increasing, but the steps by which it is increasing are uh, smaller and smaller as it comes higher in the sine wave. So now it goes down, and now it ramps down really fast, pop, 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 very big steps, and boom, off. So, um, because the, 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 the current is not linear and you need to do it with a sine wave. Um, no, the current is linear, but you, the, the stepper doesn't want linear uh, voltages. It wants to have sine waves on both, both coils. I'm now doing it only with one coil. That's also the reason why the motor is not spinning. I cannot turn it anymore. It's like really... Uh, it, it, uh, it wants to stay at this position. Uh, so it's really strong, I cannot turn it, no way, and uh, well, I have to basically do the whole thing again. So the little H bridge I built here, I should build it also here, and then I can connect it to the face here on the left, and then if everything's okay, the motor should, should be turning around. Uh, but I don't have time to do it this week anymore, no, I'm sorry. I have to work on the on these babies here. I have to work on the hypno fans because I have customers waiting for the hypno fans. So I have to stop working on the CNC and get my ass over to the hypno fans and start making them. One of the questions that I got this week um, came from Leon Dustar. He asked me, "What can you do with a laser cutter? Why do you need one?" And this, this is MIDI LED, at least two of them, and as you can see it's also uh, laser cutted and all the individual LEDs in the front panel are laser cutted as well, so uh, that the LEDs can uh, go in there and snap in. So if I have to do this by hand it will never be this uh, precise and uh, good looking. So that's what you can do with laser cutting. And also these uh, shades, they're for the living lantern, they're also laser cutted. So that's also something that I do with it. Woohoo! 500 views on my channel! Woohoo! Let's go for 1000!